Hey everyone, welcome back to Ali Bakes. I'm Eliza Saw and I have a craving for churros. I really want churros right now and obviously I probably can't get them right now. <laughs> so I decided that I would try to make them for the first time ever and this craving all came about because I was looking at some old vacation pics and you know how those always get you. I was looking at the pictures from when I was in the Philippines about two years ago and while I was there I had the best churros I've ever had in my life. Side note, if you want to read all about my trip to Philippines, I did write a blog post about it. I went all in my feels about the nostalgia and how I felt being in the place I was born in because I don't actually have memories of being there when I was born, obviously. We moved here to Canada when I was less than a year old, but yeah, if you want to read all about it, it'll be in the description box below, but back to the churros. I really wanted to try and make some, so if you want to see how I do it, then just keep on watching, but before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe if we haven't we haven't if you haven't already <laughs> if you're new to my channel i do baking videos and food related videos and just a lot of good fun stuff every single week so yeah let's get on with it so i was always under the impression that churros and shoe paste was the same and by shoe paste i mean c-h-o-u-x shoe if you don't know what shoe paste is it's the same batter that's used for cream puffs eclairs so i decided that i would just make that batter from my pumpkin cream puffs video and then just deep fry it and see how it would come out so to make this batter you're going to need some cold water some butter some salt some flour and some eggs but we're gonna put the first three ingredients into a saucepan and we're going to bring it over to the stove on medium high heat until it comes to a boil. And as soon as it comes to a boil, you wanna chuck in the flour and then just give it a good mix over low heat. And you wanna do this until it forms like a nice firm dough ball that kind of pulls away from the sides and leaves like this weird film on the bottom of the pan. And that's when you know it is ready. So I'm going to transfer it over to my stand mixer. If you don't have a stand mixer, totally okay. You can just leave it in a bowl. And to cool it off, I'm just going to use my paddle attachment to give it a nice mix. But if you don't have a stand mixer, you can use your hands, a wooden spoon, just kind of give it a good like turnover and mix it every once in a while. Let it cool for about five to seven minutes. And then we can start adding in our eggs. And this is the part that's kind of tricky because the moisture levels of the eggs is what kind of determines how well your batter is gonna work. You wanna add in one egg at a time and mix very thoroughly until you add the next egg. I'm gonna be using about three eggs for this recipe. I've used this recipe multiple times for cream puffs, eclairs, all that good stuff. And so I was pretty confident. I thought it was good because of the texture and the slight wobble that the batter gives you when you lift up the paddle attachment. So I was like, okay, I'm on the right track. I'm doing good. We're ready to move on. Then I got my mise en place ready by mise en place. I mean my pot of oil. I used about one to two inches of oil. And then I've got my wire rack in a pan and my spider this little deep frying basket thing. And then I've got my plate of cinnamon sugar on standby. So everything is pretty much ready to go. All that's left. All that's left to do is just heat up our oil. You want it? Hmm. All that's left to do is bring our oil up to a high heat. So 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It's really helpful to have a thermometer on standby. I'm just using the regular candy thermometer that I always have and just every now and then taking the temperature of the oil. But anyways, we're going to heat that up and then we're going to spoon our batter into a piping bag. I'm using the number five star tip from Ateco. So I found that the best method of dropping my batter into the oil was by piping it with one hand and then snipping it with the scissors on with the other hand. Just be careful not to let it splash. So you wanna get nice and low and close to the oil so it doesn't fall from a high place and splash hot oil everywhere. So the first few shapes I tried to do were like little nuggets and I could tell already that it was kind of losing its shape and it was just going from nicely grooved batter pieces to a balloon. There's a little poof. And I was like, okay, 
something is wrong, but I'm just gonna keep going so I can finish up my batter. <laughs> so I tried to do little nuggets at first. I also even tried to pipe some hearts and tried to pipe out a long log so that after it was frozen, I could cut it up into smaller pieces and have more uniform sizes. I tried to do circles and as you can see, they all came out okay. They were just like little poofs of dough. So when I tried to deep fry the frozen ones, which I cut into little nuggets, they also lost their shape as they fried. However, the hearts were actually pretty cute when they came out. I just continued as always, just finishing up my batter anyways, just because I didn't want to waste anything. And then I fed it to my family and we all came to the conclusion that this was not a churro, it was a cruller with cinnamon sugar. And if you don't know what a cruller is, it's just a light, fluffy type of donut. So I was feeling a little defeated. <laughs> just, a, just a little. <laughs> but we decided to move on as we do with every hardship in life. So I gave it a rest and I decided to attempt it again the next day. But before I did, I made some changes to my recipe. Let me just pull it out because I forgot what I did. So I found that the batter was a little too full of moisture, it was a little too chewy, a little too soft, a little too tender to be a churro. So what I decided to do to make it more crispy and a little more firm was to increase the water because as you know, when water hits oil, hot oil, that's how it evaporates and that's what gives you a crispy batter or crispy whatever you're trying to deep fry. I decreased the amount of butter for the amount of tenderness. It's totally fine if you're using this to bake into cream puffs or eclairs or whatever because everything kind of just evaporates and expands and it just dries out in the oven. But in hot oil, it doesn't exactly dry out. So I found that it was just a little too tender and a little bit soggy. So an important part of this, I also decreased the amount of eggs because I wanted it to have a little less chew a little less aeration, a little less fluffiness, and that is all mainly caused by the eggs because of the proteins in the eggs. And then I also increased my recipe because yesterday, even though I wasn't happy with it, it disappeared faster than I could clean up. So I guess cruller donuts are just as good. If you want the recipe for that, by the way, it'll be in the description box below. So check it out. This is my attempt at churros number two. <laughs> Excuse me. So we started with the same base, water, butter, salt, bringing it over to the stove top, bringing it to a boil, adding in our flour, and then cooking it until it becomes this nice ball of dough, bringing it over to my stand mixer, letting it sit for about five to seven minutes, and then beating it for two minutes before adding in my eggs. It. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> and right away I could see that the, even though I changed my recipe ratios but by the slightest percentages, it was already a stiffer dough. So I was pretty happy with that. And then I put it into my piping bag with the same number five star tip attached. And then I got my mise en place ready, as you do. Brought my oil up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and carefully dropped in my churro batter. I just had a blast. I was having so much fun by making this because I was already super happy with how it looked. I started with about mm, two inch long churro bites and then I moved on to try and make some long churro rings. Then I went back to the churro bites because I like the churro bites better. <laughs> and it just made it easier to eat, honestly. So as you can see, I had my whole process ready. I would deep fry about five or six churro bites. And then after they were nice and golden and crisp, I would take them out, put it onto my wire rack to drain a little bit. You can put it on paper towel if you like. I just find that you have to change the paper towel pretty often. And then once the paper towel is soaked, it's kind of useless and then you have to get a new one. So I like to put it on a wire rack and then as soon as I get my next batch of piped dough into my saucepan, I take the freshly fried ones, put it into a bowl this time, a bowl, not a plate, 
of cinnamon sugar. What was I thinking? I don't know. But when I put it into a bowl, it just made it coating so much more easier because you can just toss the whole bowl, take a new pair of tongs, and then put it into my plate of done churros. This ended up being a huge pile of about 50 or 60 churro bites. So I was pretty happy and I just kept going. Always, always, always be careful when you're deep frying things. Whenever you're putting something into oil, make sure you put it in gently so there's no splashes and you don't get any burns. And then as I was nearing the end of my piping bag, I decided to get my sauce ready because I wanted to make a nice spicy chocolate dipping sauce. And to do this, I'm gonna take some milk chocolate chips, some cream, some butter, some cinnamon, and some chili powder. And the spices are, of course, not necessary, but I highly recommend. It tastes really good with the churros. So what I'm gonna do is just pop all of that into a bowl, put it over a small saucepan of simmering water so that it can heat up very gently as I'm deep frying my last batch of churros. You wanna watch it though. You wanna make sure it's not overheating. You wanna mix it very gently every now and then. Also very be careful, very be careful, very be careful. So be very careful that when you lift your bowl of chocolate over the simmering water saucepan that you don't drip water into your oil because it'll just splatter at you. Make sure not to get any water into the chocolate as well because your chocolate will seize. Side note, if you want to know all about chocolate and chocolate tempering, I have a video on that. I will link it somewhere. So I'm going to do as soon as it's like fully melted, I'm just going to take it off the saucepan. I'm going to give it a good mix to thicken it up a little bit. I put it over a bowl of ice water so that it could be nice and cooled from the outside and then gave it a mix to kind of help temper it and bring it to a thicker texture. With the amount of cream in it though, it won't set fully hard and we are done. This made me so happy. <laughs> the whole family agreed that it was a lot more firmer, still a little light, but I was pretty happy with the texture because it was nice and crisp on the outside. Oh, that was too loud. And then combined with that spiced chocolate dipping sauce and the cinnamon sugar and the crisp dough and the tenderness on the inside, chef's kiss chef's kiss it was so good i'm super happy that i made this and i definitely plan to make this again sometime soon probably when i see my fiance again so we can share yeah so that was my churro journey thank you for coming along so that's everything if you want the recipe for the churros it'll be in the blog post listed below so don't forget to check that out if you're new to my channel i do baking videos pretty much every single week so don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you next week so thanks for watching bye